We are back with another Calgary real estate market update. It is February and stick around. We got a lot to go through today because the reality is, is so much is happening in our market, even if there's no listings on the market. So stick around. We're going to talk about articles. We have an interview with a mortgage broker talking about the interest rates, and then we're going to dive into our stats at the end and show you some incredible PDFs that you can download and get some fantastic information on. So let's get started. So as we continue talking about the market and what's happening in Calgary, the thing that's crazy to me is that we still have confusing headlines. You have all of these news articles that are just talking about so many different things. And today I want to show you a few of them. So let's jump into that right now. So this first article that we got here is talking about the Calgary housing market will ward off cooling trends in 2023. And this is coming from the CREB forecast that happened on last week. And there's lots of good information in here. And this is what we've been talking about forever. But I wanna share this specifically. Right here is a, it looks like a seller. They've moved to BC. And in this article, they talk about this seller, Taryn, her name is. She said, we're optimistic about getting a sale soon. She and her husband have just listed their bonus semi-detached home to move to BC's Okanagan region to be closer to family. Now, not long ago, the idea wouldn't have made sense financially but now she's one of the few that have left the city and they have decided that this is the time it is really now that we've hit it at this time that prices are going up here and they seem to be going down everywhere else which is true this is what we're seeing this is the trend this is the articles that you probably are reading and seeing and it's funny because i get all these comments of people who are saying like hey don't puff the market up well i'm glad you think that i have that much power to do that but I don't, <laughs> so I don't. But the thing is, is this is happening and this is where we're at. And I wanna give you real information, real data of what's going on. Now, after two years of steady increases, Calgary house prices will stabilize in 2023. And in here, Anne-Marie Laurie, who is the chief economist of CREB, she said, our market is not as bad as what people think it is. Although we're going through a period of adjustment, we're still performing relatively well. She said Calgary experienced a price correction following the 2014 oil price crash, which is buffering it from major corrections, which are being seen in other markets like Toronto and Vancouver. Interprovincial migration to Alberta, much of it from Ontario and BC, coupled with high levels of immigration from other countries has also helped sustain home values. An estimated 100,000 people came to Alberta last year with about 40,000 settling in Calgary. Conference Board of Canada suggests Calgary will, will welcome another 20, 25,000 newcomers, newcomers in 2023. I got a lot of marbles in my mouth, but I do think this is true. I think with this number might actually be higher. The thing is we are still, you are still calling us. You are still reaching out to us to find properties in Calgary, whether they're rentals, whether you're moving here, all of that is still happening. And what is absolutely crazy is I was pulling numbers for another thing, but what's crazy is there's only right today about 950 or 980 detached houses for sale in Calgary. This is a city of 1.3, 1.2, 1.4, whatever that number is now. We only have 980 houses for sale, like detached houses for sale of all price points. And that is shocking to me. And I'll show you in the data later, but that that's kind of what's happening there. Now, here is an article that we were in and it says ongoing, or this is what I said, ongoing supply shortages, especially in lower price ranges will keep the housing market competitive predicts Jared Chamberlain. Oh, look at me. I don't show you this to pump myself, to flex, as the kids say. I am showing you this because inventory is really low, especially in those lower price, kind of the average benchmark type price properties and areas. There's just not a lot to choose from. And this is actually causing a lot of pause for those who have homes that they want to sell in this market, but they're not. They're afraid of putting it on, it going too quickly and not knowing where they're going, which is a real concern. And I don't blame them at all. And so the thing that, that has to happen is there has to be more supply coming to the market, whether that's through rentals or different types of product to give more options for these buyers that are sitting and waiting because as we've talked about for like a year and a half, we have our own buyers from the city and now we have buyers from out of town who aren't selling product, who are wanting to buy 
into what we have here. And so there's just truly is a sh shortage of homes for available for those that are wanting and actually need to make a change. TD came out with a report this week as well that basically said it's the Prairie's housing outlook. And it says right at the beginning at the top, the outperformance on tap for Prairie provinces. So I'm not going to get into this. It is a, a real good report. But overall, it says at the bottom here, sales and prices in the prairie should bottom in the first half of the year before staging a modest recovery thereafter. We will also see, see sales holding well above pre-pandemic levels through 2024, marking a steep contrast compared to the nation the nation overall. This relatively resilient demand backdrop should also lead price growth in the prairies to outperform the rest of Canada moving forward. Now, I kind of agree with most of that. I don't think we're going to see uh, prices bottom in the first half of the year. That might happen across a lot of the other cities in the prairie provinces. But in Calgary, I mean, we're already seeing prices increasing. We are seeing things go up in value, properties listing over value. And, and we'll show you some of that stats in the charts that we have later on the video here. But that's this is what's happening. I mean, you can see that now. Finally, this article is also kind of misleading if you only read the headlines and actually don't look at the data behind it because latest rate hike could lead to increased insolvencies in Alberta. When people see insolvencies, this is bankruptcies, these are foreclosures, these are problems that people are entering. Now we have had conversations with buyers who have said to us, you know what? I am just going to wait for the foreclosures to spike over the next year. Let me show you something. This is a ch chart. <laughs> it is full of a lot of numbers. It comes from the Canadian Bankers Association. And I found this. And the Canadian Bankers Association talk about the number of residential mortgages in arrears in this document. It goes back to 1995. I wish I could find something that was back in the 1980s and all of that too. But this is as far back as I was able to find in time for shooting the video here. But it talks about the percentage of mortgages that are in arrears. So what this looks like when I look at this, 2007, 2008, 2009, these were the years when we also had, you know, some of the other big recessions and Calgary truly, I think, weathered that quite well, but it wasn't until I say a year and a half, two years later that you saw foreclosures increase. And at the time when 2008 and, were hap and 2008 and 9 and 7 were happening, we were anywhere from 0.2% of mortgages were in arrears up to 0.6% of mortgages were in arrears. And that was the increase that happened over that time frame. when you look at these numbers. And I know they're small, so you can't see them, but I'm just reading them out as we talk. So if we are currently sitting in this marketplace, we could see foreclosures increase. I don't, I don't doubt that, but we're not going to see people just letting go of their houses. This is the last thing people are going to let go of. And this is with the same conversation we had 10 or I guess 12 years ago with clients saying the same thing back then. And we didn't see it. And I honestly don't think we're going to see it this time around either. And even currently the latest number in here in 2022 for November is sitting at 0.36. So there's a very, very low amount of foreclosures. Now, if you understand the foreclosure process here, if you're in arrears, you can make one payment and then it makes you good for maybe another 90 days. And you're still in arrears though. So these are people who have, have haven't necessarily gone into the foreclosure process. So the actual foreclosure amount off of these numbers is even going to be less that are hitting the market. So if you believe and you honestly believe that there is going to be a flood of inventory of foreclosures that you're going to get a smoking deal on, I am here to tell you that is not going to happen. And I am fine with that being public on video recorded. It's not going to happen. You're not going to see that happening for many, many reasons. And it's for a lot of the reasons we're going to talk about in the rest of the video here. And so with all of this foreclosure talk, it got me thinking because we have a lot of interest rate conversations happen over the last year and a half with rates increasing all of the time. Now it is quite confusing because when you have a bond rate, 
versus, sorry, a, a fixed rate and a, a variable rate. And they're actually tied to two different things. The variable rate is tied to the interest rate that the Bank of Canada sets, that, that rate that keeps going up. That is really your, in, your variable rate. Now our five year fixed, any fixed rates are tied to bond rates. And here's what something, something crazy happened this week. It was expected, but I wanna hear the straight from the lips of Lindsay Lebrec, who is a mortgage broker that we work with. So Lindsay, what has happened and where do you see things going over the spring here in Calgary and Alberta? So feels like a loaded question as it has been a little bit of a roller coaster watching the interest rates. However, yesterday, um, the US federal government increased their interest rates again, um, which then drove down their bond rate, which then affects our bond rate, um, which then affected our five year fixed rate um, mortgages. So that's been really neat to see. There has been anticipation of this happening all week. So we have seen some lenders already start to decrease their rates at the beginning of the week and then last night um, we saw a flurry of emails of lenders actually decreasing those five-year fixed rate mortgages right now a range with a full feature mortgage um, you're looking around like 4.89 percent um, there are uh, some more lenders that have larger margins out there which could bring that down a bit but i would say your average full feature mortgage is 4.89. Truly believe that interest rates are going to come down um, even, even further as we are going into recession. Um, I know I'm not the first one to say it, but all the indicators show that we are going to. So we'll see a really good um, spring market with the interest rates down because that's going to bring a lot of people out um, just ready to shop. So I want to understand this visually because what Lindsay said is a really valid point in terms of we could see five year fix continue to go down. Even if we saw variable rates increasing, buying in this market on a fixed rate can actually be a good thing because it's going to stay down. And here's why. So when the U.S. decides to increase their interest rate, what that does is it devalues the value of a bond, right? And now the, our bond rate in Canada, so the Canadian, I'll just do this, Canadian bond rate is kind of attached to the American bond rate. Just go with it. <laughs> it is. And what happens is when our value of our bonds decrease, that creates a gap in our market that expands from the interest rate that is being charged to the cost of the bond rate. So there is this gap and banks are always playing this game of what the bond value is and interest rates, the fixed interest rates are always kind of moving tied to that. So if US increases their rates, it drops their bond, which drops our bond, which actually drops our fixed interest rate. And I know you can't quite see that, but, but that's what's happening. And as long as this stays the way it is, because the US is basically saying that we're in a recession, we had to increase our, our interest rates. But what that does in, over the scheme of things when you lay this out, is it actually decreases our fixed rate. So as we in Calgary, Alberta, enter the spring market, interest rates for fixed mortgages are going to get cheaper. And this is just going to fuel our market. We are already tight. It's going to, you know, the people that need to make changes are gonna make changes and they're gonna to come to the market because, and doing a three year fix, like Lindsay said, is a great idea because we're gonna figure this stuff out over the next three years or so. And by that time, when you renew your mortgage, you'll be in a place where you could probably end up, or hopefully end up choosing variables fixed. You can have more options and more choices at decent prices. So this is kind of what's happening in the Calgary market, in the Alberta market and across Canada for fixed rates. And because Calgary is in a unique position compared to a lot of other major cities across the country, it is kind of allowing us to kind of keep moving forward and feel less of the recession that might be felt in other major cities and decreases in prices compared to what we're going to feel here. So we have been talking a lot on our channel about charts, what is happening in the market, showing you creating data and, and really going into the data parts of the Calgary market. And this month we have actually come out with our first monthly report 
that actually shares the data with you in terms of the charts that we have, some commentary around it. So if this is something that is of value to you and you want to have it, you can follow the link in the description and you'll be able to download that PDF and be able to download that <laughs> and have it and use it and, and be able to look at that information. All we ask is that if this is information is great and you wanna see more data, more information like this, put in the comments. I wanna see comments that this is helpful because it takes a lot of time creating these charts, this information. So if this is helpful, the video that we shoot, as well as the data that we're providing in this report, please comment. Let's get 300 likes on this video. Let's do all this kind of stuff because I want to be able to new offering this and I need to know that it's a value to you who is watching, so go ahead and do that. Now, I'm gonna dive into the data. So if you've downloaded the report or if you're going to, all of my commentary is gonna be attached to these charts that we're talking about and you'll be able to see it in the PDF. So let's start off with this. This is a new chart that we pulled together from all the information that we have. And right here, the, basically the green line up top is considered our benchmark price. And so the benchmark price is up here. This is inventory, red down here is sales. And why I wanna share this with you is you can see we had an increase in price. It was fairly flat for a long time. We've seen an increase, if any, actually in this time frame, you could actually say it decreased a bit too. But then over the last little bit, we've seen it increase again. Now this is tied to inventory. Look at these numbers and this space. This is the number of listings in the city compared to the number of sales down below, which is down here. And this to me is a fat market with a PH on there. This is a fat market and now we are not in a fat market. We are thin, we are lean, we are, yeah, a machine. <laughs> but this is, this is what's happened. In the past, we've really seen a fat market in terms of a ton of listings, a ton of options, a ton of things happening in terms of stuff coming on, but the sales were really low. And now we are sitting in a very different market. So if you are planning on going out and buying, there's not a lot on the market. If you're planning on selling, you're gonna have a potentially a lot of buyers interested if you do the right steps. Not every house is selling, that will always happen. So you still gotta do the right things to make that happen. Now, if we look at sales versus new listings, like we've talked about in the past, these are the years of increased value, right? If this, the new listings dip below the sales, which it did just this last Christmas, right? And so these are the years when you actually look at benchmark pricing when prices are starting to go up. And we were saying before Christmas, there's a really good chance that this is what we're gonna see. And we did. And that to me shows a lot of momentum in our market. And we're probably gonna see prices increasing over this next year. How much, I do not know. I do not think it's a 50% increase. I don't think it's gonna be anything ridiculous, but I also don't think it's gonna be as small as some of the big reports that you're seeing out there. Maybe they're saying 2%, 4%, whatever. I mean, even if we just see a 60, $70,000 increase in our benchmark pricing, that is still close to 10% increase. So that could happen because if you have a lot of momentum, a lot of buyers, multiple offers, that's not unrealistic if you have a lot of demand in a low supply type market, right? Now, in here is month over month prices in Calgary. So you can see, again, all of the averages, the median, as well as, oh, some of those labels are all wrong. We're gonna fix that. Nothing like pointing out your mistakes live on video. But, sorry, we are seeing prices increasing. And this is what I said earlier in the video. So if you see right here, the, the blue is our benchmark, and that actually is ticked up and the median and the average both have increased from month to month. That's what that is looking at. Not year over year, but it's from month to month. Months of inventory across the whole city. We are still sitting in a seller's market and that is where we're at. Anything below that bottom purple line is in a seller's market. And if you go to the PDF, I have some more commentary about that, but that's, that's where we're at with that. Oh, the number of listings, the number of listings. Like I said at the beginning of the video or at some point earlier, in a city of the size that we are, we only have 980 some odd detached homes currently for sale in the city. That blows my mind. It might've been 970 something, but, but that is so low. And if you look at the whole market, we are that 
orange dot. And if you look at everywhere else over the last 10 years since 2013, there is nothing. There's none of these years has started this low in terms of inventory. That says something. There's just not a lot on the market that tied with the number of sales. Again, if you look all the years past, we are sitting right in the middle. So it's not like we have the lowest amount of sales over the last 10 or so years. We are actually in could be third or fourth spot. So you got 2022, you got probably 2013. This yellow might be 2021 right in here, which is kind of close and tied with this current year right now in 2023. So there's the, like, we still have a lot of demand, a lot of sales that are happening. This is great to see. So this is the actives versus solds and pendings. So this is a, a number that we are actually pulling every day. So you see some of those little pike, spikes like this, like that's kind of just data and, and dips, like kind of ignore those, but just look at the trend that is happening. So we started up here and right around September, late summer, we saw the actives decrease, but as soon as we hit January, what happened? It leveled out. People relisted, putting their home back on the market. There's been more product sitting there. Well, what happened with pendings? As soon as more product came to the market, people bought them. And, as, and these are the ones that all firmed up. And this is actually increased. We have a slight increase on that as well. So as soon as stuff is hitting the market, it's getting snapped up. And the thing that you have to make sure when you're selling your property, one, that you know where you're going, if it's your own personal property, and two, that you have a plan in place because prepping your home, still doing the staging, still doing all the stuff that matters, really, really, really makes a difference. And we have incredible systems in our team to help you do that. So reach out to us if, if you're considering that and let us be an option for you when you're, when you're looking at the market of selling. Now, months of inventory, we have two numbers in here. The red is your seven day and the blue is your 30 day inventory. The red one is kind of a lead indicator to tell us what the 30 day might do. Now, as you can see, this is January 1st right here, and it kind of was figuring itself out for the first week, but then this dropped. It dropped so much that it's just over one month of inventory. And what happened? This followed. So we could end up seeing our months of inventory just across the city in the coming, oh, I don't know, 30 to 90 days actually continue to go down if these numbers stay down in that area. So it's something we wanna watch. Now the collective days on market, since July, we've been seeing it slowly climb. And then again, right when we hit January, that number has come down a little bit. So probably from like mid fifties to kind of low fifties is the collective days on market. What collective days versus just days on market, the difference is, is if you went on the market and took it off for a quick amount of time and then put it back on, it still adds that day, that, that total time. Now, if you take it off long enough, I think it's about 30 days, maybe 60 days, and you put it back on, then it truly resets that counter, I think, is how the, I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that, but I do know that that's kind of, there is a time frame, and I think it might be about 60 days, but if you take it off and put it back on fairly quickly, it's counting that total collective days on market, and that's what we're looking at here, not just the first thing. So, so if you are, planning and you want more information, you want more data, two things I want you to do, go in the description, get the data, get the PDFs. We also have links to all the PDFs that we have for you that can help you in this market from like our letter to a seller template if you're, when you're in multiple offers, which really can help you win multiple offers. But I want you to head over to this video next because we've got a lot more great information for you and let's see you on that video.